Okay, so we're going to start on chapter five today. So basically, chapter four is kind of a precursor to chapter five. Okay, so the idea here is we're going to talk about chapter five. My pen go that I just had. I'll go there. Is that it? Must be. Chapter 5, which is least squares regression. Okay. I think that's the pen I just had a second ago. But. All right. Least squares regression. So this is, you can think of this as the next step after you confirm um, that linear correlation is a good idea. Okay, so this really is kind of the next step. Okay. So you only do this if it's a linear pattern on your scatter plot and basically R there are nonlinear types of regression we're not going to talk about them we just we'll just say that we know they exist but it's beyond the scope of our class okay so you've done a scatter plot you said yeah these look good now the question is um, you can you know if you have a scatter plot here let's say it's something like that okay now there's a lot of different straight lines you could draw right I could draw this line, I could draw this line, I could draw that line. Which line is the best? Right? They're all, they all seem to fit, right? How do you decide which line is the best? And so, what we've decided here is that there's a method called ordinary <coughs> least <coughs> squares. That's the best. I'll put a star and say that's the best method. Okay? Now, the reason why it's the best method is it minimizes the vertical distance to the line. Okay? And what I mean by that is, let me draw another scatter plot here. Okay, so I got a bunch of dots here <coughs> for some data that I'm doing. Okay, and there are lots of ways to, or there are several different ways to try to minimize the distance. Okay, so the ordinary least squares method says, okay, we're going to minimize the vertical distance the line for every dot okay so that's the green line i just used maybe i should turn up the light if that helps a little bit for the video i don't want to turn on too many lights but that, that helps okay so that's the green line there now so that's the vertical distance you could also do what we call the orthogonal or the straight line where i try to make a right angle with every point Okay. What is that word? Orthogonal? Orthogonal. Orthogonal equals a right angle. Okay. So that would be another method. Or rather than doing the vertical method, we could do, well, it's a good thing I brought my different others, my black pen. I don't that one. Uh, blue. Where's blue? Do I not have a blue pen today? There it is. Okay. There's one I got one here. Okay. Or I could minimize the horizontal distance. Okay. You can see in some cases that's a better idea, in some cases it's not. Okay. So the idea, the best method is the vertical distance. Now, 
normally I teach Math 2040 in the fall, and I say you should, if you want to really get into the, why this is the best method, take my Math 2040 class. But they didn't give me Math 2040 in the fall, so I'm bummed about that. But anyway, well, if you will, you would hate to know to do this, but just trust me, the vertical method is the best method. Okay. And so we refer to this as the OLS method, ordinary least squares, and it minimizes the vertical distance. Okay. All right. So um, now you guys are generally familiar with the equation. Okay. Um, you're familiar with y equals mx plus b, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all learned that in math 1010 or high school or whenever you learned it, right? Okay. Now, the question is, how do you find the m and how do you find the b? So that's the slope, right? m is your slope. Okay. And the question is, how do you find it when you have a bunch of dots? In the past, you take an algebra class and they'll say, oh, Mathematicians have figured out the equation of the line should be this, but they don't tell you how to figure that out. I'm going to tell you how to figure that out. Okay? So the slope m equals the correlation coefficient r. Okay? So that's once again why chapter 4 is really important because you need that for this. Times s sub y over s sub x. Okay? What do you think S of Y and S of X stands for? Standard deviation of Y and standard deviation of X. I put that right in the glare. That's terrible. Sorry, people on the video. Now, B, in this case, is Y bar minus M times X bar. Okay? So... Um, so those are the two equations that you're going to need to know. I'm assuming you already know this one, right? But these are these are the two new ones. Okay. And the y bar and the x bar are the means of both those, right? The y bar and the x bar are the means of your y data and your x data. That's correct. Okay. All right. So now, important things important to remember. Okay, so OLS can be used for prediction, but um, we should stay in the range. And here's what I mean by that, okay? You can often do growth charts. So maybe we would have age, maybe we would have height. Okay. And let's say that we're doing it for a toddler. Okay. And maybe for a toddler between the ages of, say, two and eight, it looks like a nice straight line. Okay. Now it gets risky. Uh, if, if this is your data, if, if your range is from 2 to 8, then this might be from wherever to wherever. Say 36 to 48, I don't know, I'm making these numbers up. Okay? That might be a good, good predictor. But the problem is, what if you wanted to predict somebody who was 20 years old? Would that be a good idea? Probably not, because what happens as you get tall, as you get older? You yeah, you stop growing, and so if you continued this, you know, you might have somebody. I'll continue it up to here. That's like 20 feet tall. Okay, and so whatever we're doing for prediction, it does a really good job for this range. It doesn't do such a good job that number okay because you don't know what could happen and, and we know and that's why I use human growth because human growth levels off after usually in the high school okay 
So um, let's see here. All right, so let's do an example here. And oh, you know what? I don't know if I have this. I don't know if this computer is set up. Well, let's see here. I may be giving you access to a file here. Go ahead and log into Canvas while I look up this file. Um, and I will load this up to Canvas in just a minute when I download it. I forgot to do this before class. And then find a file maybe? Is that what you mean? I will just post it as a worksheet probably. This thing, oh, I hate this stupid duo. It doesn't work half the time. Oh, now it works after I canceled the dumb thing. All right. Um, oh, I don't have a worksheets thing. I need to fix this. Okay, so there should be a new group called Worksheets, and probably want to refresh your page, but I just will upload a bit to there. Um, let me start sharing here. All right. So you should have this worksheet 4.1. Go ahead and open it up. Oh, this one's already done. That wasn't supposed to be done. How did that happen? Well, just we're going to erase everything. Um, go ahead, erase all this stuff. Oh, I guess it's okay because we're doing something different. Let me resize this. Okay. So this is. All right. So this is this is a worksheet that we use in another class. I didn't realize it wasn't supposed to have any information on it. That's all right. Okay, so we've got our scatter plot here. Basically, uh, one golfer has chosen to swing the ball on a 70 degree day with no wind. And we want to see if there is a relationship between club head speed and distance in yards. Okay, so as you look at your scatter plot, do you think that a straight line might fit that? Yes. yes. Yeah, it seems, seems pretty good, right? 
Okay. So I believe he, uh, here, yes, yeah, so we, we figured out the calculation, the correlation coefficient. We got a correlation coefficient of 0.9387. You would rate that as strong, moderate, weak, or no correlation. That would be a very strong correlation, okay? All right, so now the idea here is we want to figure out what is the equation of the ordinary least squares line, okay? We want to figure out what, what is the equation. We want to figure out the equation y equals mx plus b, but we want to figure out what is the m and what is the b, okay? So we're going to fit a line here, okay? So let me show you how to do that. So we want to do y equals mx plus b. And I believe we've got all the calculations already done for you guys here. So I don't pick on Dalton near enough. Okay. So Dalton, can you help me find the slope of this line? So it's the mean of each of those. No, the slope is not the mean. Slope oh. is R What's R? Right. Is R the rate? Is R, what is R? You don't know? Did you have take the quiz today? Yeah. What was R on the quiz today? You couldn't remember? Oh man, well, if hopefully, if you remember, then I will have, even though I didn't succeed yesterday, I will have succeeded in helping you to remember something from yesterday. Today. Do you know, Chandler? Where is the correlation? Correlation coefficient. What is the correlation? So we're going to use R times S sub Y divided by S sub X, okay? So, do you see the correlation coefficient anywhere on this worksheet? This should be the... Or are you sitting too far in the back that you can't see the worksheet? Actually, if you pulled it up on your screen, you should still see it on your screen. Although it's not labeled very well. The student must have done this, not me, right? It was you. <laughs> Although I did mention it just a moment ago. Is it what? 0 0.9387. 0 0.9387, that's your correlation coefficient, right? So we label that better so that we know what that is. Correlation coefficient. Okay? So we're going to take our R, and we're going to multiply that by... What do you think S of Y is? 266, is that the S? Does the S stand for standard deviation? And 266 is not the standard deviation, it is the, the, mean. the mean, okay? The mean. But I, want, I don't want the mean. I want S of Y. What's S of Y? What's 7.74? Of? The y variable. We're calling the, the what yards is the y variable. We're calling speed the x variable. Now, let's think about this for just a moment. This is a review of yesterday. Is this graph correct? Should I have the speed cause, if club head speed cause your ball to go far, or does going far affect how fast you swing the club? Speed affects, speed affects the other one. So the speed is the independent or the explanatory variable. The distance is the dependent or the response variable. The ball responds to how hard you swing the ball or how fast you swing the club, right? So this is definitely a case where club head speed should be on the x-axis and distance should be on the y. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, all right, so we're taking the standard deviation of y and then we're going to divide by which is standard deviation of x, which is my club head speed, okay? So what we're saying is the slope in this case is 3.1661, okay? 
So paid, I don't think I knew there enough either. Can you help me find the y-intercept of b? Yes, that's a good answer. I hope so too. Okay. The formula should be, just read the formula off the board. Y, uh, bar, y bar, bar minus, uh, minus m times x bar. x bar. Okay, and y bar in this case is the mean. The mean, which mean? I get two of them. The 266. 266, because that's what my y variable. Minus uh, the 101. Uh, the <coughs> What's m? M is the slope, which Chandler, or not Chandler, uh, Dalton just told us. Which is 3.1661 times. X bar, which is the mean of the speed. Mean of the speed, which is 101.875. Okay? What does B mean again? What does B mean? Yeah, what does B stand for in this again? What does B stand for in this equation? Stands for B. B stands for B. It's the y intercept. Okay. So what that means is, so let's think about this for a minute. Okay, so I found my Y, I found my B. So Philip, what is my equation? Y minus. Y equals. Yeah, y equals minus. So I've just done my y equals mx plus b here, right? Yeah. What's m? m is an standard deviation. Nope. You know, Sandra? Slope. It's the slope. And the slope is? Dalton just told us what the slope was. Remember what Dalton said? Point to a one screen, Tandri. You know what it is. No, I think that he. Are you keeping exactly. up with this spell? Yeah. Oh, you're not editing the worksheet. Ah. You're supposed to edit it. There we go. Don't just look at it. You're supposed to be typing along, keeping up. So, Sandra, what is the slope again? Uh, three point. One six six one times x plus Alex. It's the negative five plus the nine point six. Okay. You remember that equation? That type sort of equation from algebra in high school or math ten ten? Who remembers? Three. Who does not remember? Uh oh. Okay. So, what is the, so x is still a variable there that we need to figure out. X is the variable. Okay. The idea here is, okay. Now, let me show you. Before, I'm going to answer that question in just a moment. Now, let me ask you another question. Do you think Excel can figure this out without you? Yes. How many points are you going to get if you do that way? Zero. Zero. Okay. But would you like me to show you how? Would you like to now know that you're as smart as a computer? I mean, shouldn't we at least get one because no. we knew that command? <laughs> it's actually it's a procedure, not a command. But yeah, let's see here. Okay, so if you want to find the equation of the regression line, pick a point. Any point will do on your graph. Right-click that point and then say add a trend line. Okay? That trend line is the ordinary least squares line, okay? But you notice the equation is still not there yet, but it did draw a line for you. If you go down here to the bottom, 
it says display the equation on the chart. It also says display the R squared. What is the R squared? I swear it's not. The correlation coefficient squared, right? Okay. So then you can move this here where you can read it. Okay. So do you notice there that 3.1661x plus 59 point, they rounded 797 instead of 7966. We're actually more accurate than the computer. How about that? We got an extra digit they don't have. Okay. So. This is going to be on your next test, maybe on your quiz tomorrow, probably, probably on your quiz tomorrow. I will say, here's a bunch of data. I won't make you figure the correlation coefficient by hand because that will take what's much too long. But if I give you the correlation coefficient and the standard deviation, the mean, could you figure that out, figure out the ordinary least squares regression equation? Possibly. Possibly. Okay. Hopefully we can change that to probably and then heck yeah. Okay, by next week. Can it be heck yeah by next week? Yeah. All right. Definitely possible. Now let's think about this for a minute, okay? So the equation of the regression line is the ordinary least squares. Yes. Okay. All right, so this is the answer right here. That's the answer that I'm looking for when I say find the regression equation. This is the kind of thing that I would like you to find. Now, notice I put plus a negative. I didn't put the plus there, but that's okay. Because, you know, the same thing. Okay? Now, the idea here is okay, so we went 99, 100, 101, 100, 200, 300, 104. 104 when nobody hit the wall 104 miles an hour. Okay? Now, by the way, you'll notice here twice this person swung their club at 100 miles an hour. One time, in fact, if we look over here at their data, one time it went 257 yards, okay? 257, that's that dot right here. And one time it went 263 yards, okay? So the line basically splits the difference here, okay? If we were, in fact, let's figure out if we swung our club at 100 miles an hour, how far it would go. Okay, so we're going to use this, use this to predict how far ball goes if we swing 100 miles per hour. Okay, so who haven't I picked on? Aaron, Bettina, I haven't picked on you. Can you tell me how to, how to predict how far the ball it would go if we went 100 miles an hour? Well, you can kind of look at it and guess here. Based on the graph, what would you guess? 161, maybe? Okay. Let's see how good a guesser you are. Okay. So how would I predict how far this ball would go? What's the X in this case? That's your question that you didn't know, okay? What's your X data over here? Oh, the speed. The speed. And how fast am I going to swing it? 100 miles an hour. So 100 is my X. Okay? So equals what? 3.1661 times 100. Plus the negative, and that's 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 why I say that's why I put the plus in there because it'll be negative for you. Okay, plus the negative. So we guess when we were looking on our graph that it would go about 261 miles, or excuse me, 261 yards. Here's our drum roll. See how good of a guesser the, the Tina was. 260.8 yards. That's a pretty good guess, right? Now let's do this again. Nobody swung it at 104 miles. We can kind of look at the chart and guess. What would be your guess there, Aaron? If I swung it at 104 miles an hour, I would go about how far? 268. No, oh, I'm sure. Okay. 
273, 274, okay? How would you find out for sure? Same way, so tell me what to do. Equals 3.1661 times Yeah, what you said X was? X was 104 miles an hour, right? So 104. We're going to predict this point right here. 104. 104 plus the Y intercept. Okay? 273 and a half yards. That's what we would predict. Does that make sense? Okay, now, to illustrate why. We should only use numbers inside the range, okay? In this case, 99 to 105, we're golden. I might even go, say, 98 to 106. But what if, what if I hit the ball at zero miles per hour? According to the equation, How far will it go? It's going to go backwards, right? How far? It's going to go backwards 55.797 feet. You think that would really happen? Do you understand why, Latina? Yeah, because that's not possible. It's not possible because if I put a zero in for the X, that, that takes that term out and it's going to go backwards almost 56 yards. And that's why you're saying... That's why prediction outside the range isn't very good. Okay? Now, can I predict 98 or 97 or even maybe 96? Probably would be okay. Could I predict 300 miles an hour? Probably not. Okay? probably destroy the ball at that speed, right? Or the club, I'm not sure which. Okay? So yes, so just to just to punch this through again, who haven't I picked on? Alex, I haven't picked on you. I'm gonna have to start picking on people again because it's such a small class, okay? So how far would it go? What would, how would I do the math? So you would plug the zero into the equation. Okay. Point one six six one into a zero. Times zero plus then you would plus the negative. negative. So it would go backwards fifty six yards. Which clearly doesn't make sense. Okay? But that's what the y intercept is. Does that make sense? Patina? The y or the x? The B. Okay. Sure. Sure. It'll take me a while, but I'll probably understand it too. Okay, so let me draw a picture. Right now that I understand. Let me draw the picture really quick, and hopefully this will help you understand it. Okay? Stop sharing. All right, we're going to draw our picture. Okay. So the idea here is I've got um, I've got my line here. So my line goes from what 99? You guys have to tell me to 105. And it goes from how what's the smallest point I got on my graph? What is it? Is it? What is it? Is it the two fifty five? Is that the smallest number? Yeah. yeah. Two fifty five and the highest number is two eighty. Okay, so I've got a line here that goes like this. Okay? Yes. If I were to continue that line down here. This is my B, which equals negative 55.797, okay? So the B is my y-intercept. This is my y-axis. This is my x-axis. This tells me where this line crosses my y-axis, okay? So it's really good for this to this. It's not so good below, especially far below, because zero doesn't make it. Uh, Hit, if I hit the ball zero miles an hour, it shouldn't go anywhere, right? According to the equation, it's going to go backwards 56 yards. Okay? So that's why prediction outside the range is risky. We should stay in the range 
ideally between 99 and 105, because that's the data I used. I could probably go outside a little bit there, but I, I don't want to go, probably wouldn't want to go to 120 miles an hour or to 50 miles an hour. Probably wouldn't be good for that. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So, Over here. Okay. Do we need to know where the X meets the line? You do for your equation so that you can make your equation. Ah, okay. So that, that's that's why that's why B is important. I was just explaining why why X is why it's the line. Line. The, Yeah, you need your B in order to get this equation. Okay. All right, so Let's do another example here. Oh, by the way, let me back up a second before I do this example, especially because we're good on time. Uh, let me share my screen again. Now we know we, we talked to you a little bit yesterday about the R squared value. So the R squared is 0.8811. Do you remember what that means? The correlation coefficient squared, but what does the 88% mean? Okay, I showed you that free economics video yesterday. What it means essentially is that 88% of the model, in this case, the distance the ball goes, is explained, 88% uh, of the variation, I wrote that wrong. 88% of the variation is explained by the model which is y equals 3.1661x minus 55.797, okay? If 88% is explained, how much is unexplained? It's 12%, right? Okay, now, so this sounds like it's a really good model. What are some things that might affect how far the ball went? Wind. Wind. We said there was no wind, but maybe there was a puff of wind, right? What else? What'd you say? The angle you hit the ball. The angle you hit the ball. What else? When it hits the ground, did it hit a wet spot and go farther? Or did it hit a pebble and bounce back? Right? Okay, so, yeah, so this is why R squared is important. It's really important. It's more important for regression than it is for correlation because it tells you how, it tells you whether you have a good model or not. Now, remember when we did that video yesterday, I think it was like 53%, the R squared, I think in that case, was like 53% which means that 47% was unexplained. And they tried to come up with some reasons why it might be unexplained. You know, the pebble, the wind, the moisture, the angle you hit the ball, things like that. They, they, they blamed it on the regression. okay? So that, that's, that's another important thing to remember is your R squared value. So would you say this seems like it's a pretty good model? Yeah, seems like it's pretty good. Um, all right, now let's do another example here. So yesterday we talked about the correlation coefficient equation, which brought us to R. Yeah. And then I don't know if I've heard, like, why did you just square it? Oh, R squared coefficient of variation. Right. Okay. 
So if I introduced it yesterday, but today I'm really explaining it better. Okay. This this is used to judge how good your your equation is. So this seems like a pretty good model. Okay. Okay. All right. Now um, let me do another quick example here. Let's say that um, you find a fossil of a dinosaur it is a humerus you want to predict how long the femur is based on past data. Um, the femur equals mega three point six six plus one point one nine seven of the femur. Okay. Oh, I wrote something wrong here. The humerus. Sorry. Humerus. Oh, hold on. So in the in the problem, you want to predict how long the femur is? Yes. Based on the past data, the humerus. Equals that. Okay. Now I've got a really stale joke for you, but I'm going to show it to you on my notes here. You may think it's funny, but I find this humorous. Or not funny. I got nothing. Not even a groan. Um, I just can't Tough remember crowd. Past everybody. It was backwards. Yeah, you may not think it's funny, but I find this humorous. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll give up my comedian job. <laughs> okay, so how would you figure out how long the femur is based on this regression equation? It must be Dalton's turn again. I should have picked on uh, Chandler before he left. So now that he's gone, we'll make fun of him on video, okay? <laughs> Do you think he'll watch this? Uh, probably not. All right. Well, Chandler, tell us tomorrow if you watch this video in class. Okay. Add 3.66 to the other side. So the, oh, sorry. If, oh, you know what? I forgot to give you one more piece of information. Uh, the femur, find a fossil and it is a humerus. Oh, the femur, the humerus is 50 centimeters long. Let's just say that. And I should have given you that information. Which is the humerus? The humerus is 50 centimeters long. We want to find out how long the femur is. So what would I do, Dalton? Um, add 3.66 to what? Centimeters. Well, I need to put this in here somewhere. Where does it go in my equation? The first number. So the first number here, okay. So 50 equals? Negative 3.66 plus 1.197 x minus. I'll put f for femur, right? Yeah. Okay. Add 3.66, which is uh, 53.66 equals 1.197 times the femur. Divide by 1.197. The femur is how long? Who's got a calculator or Excel? You should all be raising your hands. You've all got Excel, I know. Am I really going to beat you guys? 44.828 centimeters. Okay. 
So all I'm going to check is, can you do some little bit of basic algebra? What if I said, what if rather than giving you the humerus, I had the um, femur? Femur is uh, 52 centimeters. How long is the humerus? Humerus, I can't spell. M-E-R-U-S. Okay, it must be your turn again, Philip. Getting serious now, he's got his glasses on. <laughs> um, I'm going to divide it the 52 centimeter. We're using this equation, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Don't, don't be doing any dividing before you know what you're doing. Oh, I mean, if we want to find how, how long is it, we're going to. How long is the humerus if the femur is 52 centimeters long? It's on three times 3.6. Negative 3.66. Times 50. Plus. I mean, plus 45. 1.197. Follow the equation. Oh, yeah, I that. And so. Times. Times. 53. 2. That's a 2. two right? Centimeter. Yep. Negative 3 minus 6. I mean. Okay, so can you plug that in and tell me what the answer is? Can you use my calculator? Yeah, I guess, but you need to use you need to know how to do it with Excel too. That's right, but if you want to do it faster on your calculator, go ahead. Uh, I would already be done. I would have pressed enter. See how fast that is Excel. See if you get the same answer I do. Uh, negative 0 0.047. What'd you say? Negative. Negative? Zero. Do you think your bone would be a negative length? Yeah, if you divided the remaining of the negative 3 minus. There's no dividing. You did something wrong. Uh -huh. You know what the answer is? The answer is 58.584. Okay, you need to practice your calculator and your Excel. Because that's what you should have gotten on your calculator. And if you're dividing, you did something wrong. There was no dividing on that one. Four times. Okay, can you get it now? Now that you know what the right answer should be. Did you get it? No, not yet. Okay, I'm just going to give you a few more seconds. We'll have to move on. But...
10 times all put together. Uh, okay, well, let's chat after class a little bit, okay? All right, so I want to move on to another thing here, okay? Um, I still, yes, okay. All right, um, let's talk about the question of causation. Okay, now let me just say this before we go into here. Does have it, do you think that people with big feet are taller as a general rule? Okay, do you think having big feet causes you to be tall? Do you think being tall causes you to have big feet? It's kind of a chicken or the egg thing, right? They're associated, but does one cause the other? Sometimes the question of causation can be tough, okay? So when we talk about causation, you've all heard that correlation does not equal causality, right? Okay? So a strong relationship does not mean one causes the other. Okay? The relationship between two variables can be influenced by lurking variables. What is a lurking variable again? Something you forgot to include in your study, right? Okay. Number three, the best evidence usually comes from randomized experiments. Okay? If you can randomize, sometimes there are things you can't do for ethical reasons. Okay? Experiments or... What'd you say? Experiments? Experiments. Yeah. Okay? Number four, the observed relationship may be due to a direct cause, b common response, or c confounding. Okay. But here's the cool part. Number five. Okay. Observed relationship can be used even if not caused. And I have a cool video to share with you. Um, but before, I want to finish my notes and then I'll show you this really cool video. Okay? So, criteria to establish cause. Number one. Association is strong. Okay? Now, one example might be think of smoking and lung cancer. Okay? That would be an example. This is an example of something that they haven't done an experiment on. 
humans because it would be unethical for me to force you to smoke or me to force you not to smoke if you were a smoker. Okay? How many of you would like me to force you to all to smoke? Nobody raised their hand. Okay? We, uh, we must not have any smokers in here because usually they would be like, yeah, sure, make me smoke. Okay? <laughs> all right. To the association is consistent. That's been seen in multiple studies. Okay? So you can't have just one study, you have to see this a bunch of times. <clears throat> Higher doses associated with stronger responses. Okay. The more you smoke, the sooner you get cancer. Okay. Number four, the cause predates the effects. You have to smoke before you get the cancer. Okay. And five, the cause is plausible. Okay, they have done um, studies on rats and mice and things like that, and they force them to inhale tobacco smoke. Okay, all right, now what I'd like to do, I don't want to show this on the video, but I've got a really cool video about polio, also from Freakonomics. I will show you the link here. I will not show it on the screen that you can, for those of you who are watching at home, do you think Jordan's watching this at home? Jordan, you'll have to tell us when you come back to class if you watch this. George. Jordan. Jordan. Oh, Jordan. So let me, I will show you the link here. Um, watch question mark equals V. Equals now. I gotta see if I type this right. L B capital O capital D Q S L C four capital T G. Let's see if that takes me to the right place. It did not. That's the pits. Okay, well, I'll try it again. But anyway, we're gonna. I'll, I'll search another way. The other way is just to search for ice cream polio. I think that'll find it. That's probably the easier way to find it. Yeah, this is it. This is a one and a half minute video. I'm going to turn off the video because I don't want to break any copyright laws. But um, how do I do this? Stop sharing. And watch this video. It's awesome. <laughs>